Tonight, a historic hearing. I am innocent of this charge. One of the accusers of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh takes the stand to tell her side of the story as senators decide whether to give him a seat on the country's highest court. We'll also tell you what UM is doing to renew the university's sexual assault policy. Plus, Thursday night lights. The Miami Hurricanes football team takes on UNC tonight at Hard Rock Stadium. We'll go live at the stadium to tell you what to expect from the Canes right before kickoff. And later on, tipsy twist. People wanted something better than your average American beer. One South Florida brewery offers some funky beer flavors like coconut and bacon. But are they popular with their patrons? We'll have all the tasty details. News Vision starts right now. Breaking tonight, one of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh's accusers speaks out in front of the Senate. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford sharing details about her alleged sexual assault more than three decades ago. This, as the University of Miami says, it will take more action to prevent sexual assault on our campus. Good evening, I'm Portia Bowdish. And I'm Rebecca Chung. Thank you for joining us. A lot has happened on Capitol Hill today, and UMTV reporter Brianna Ross has been following it all. She joins us live in studio with more. Well guys, it's been a historic day on Capitol Hill as the Senate Judiciary Committee re reconvened hearings for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh with just two participants. Christine Blasey Ford says she is 100% certain a drunk Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when they were teenagers. Kavanaugh says he absolutely did not. From the same oath to tell the truth, two very different versions of what that truth is. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. Brett Kavanaugh defends himself against charges he calls absolutely false. I've never sexually assaulted anyone. I am here today not because I want to be. I am terrified. I just wanted to let you know I'm very sorry. Um, that's not right. Arizona sex crimes prosecutor Rachel Mitchell did the questioning on behalf of the all-male Republican committee members. Republicans have questioned the last-minute timing of Ford's revelation. Democratic committee member Dianne Feinstein knew about Ford's story in July. It wasn't made public until a September Washington Post report. I am an independent person and I am no one's pawn. Ford says though the alleged event happened more than three decades ago, she still gets panicked. She has two front doors on her house to ease claustrophobia. She says she doesn't remember all of the details. Indelible in the hippocampus is the laughter, the, la the uproarious laughter. This is a circus. The consequences will extend long past my nomination. With only two of them before the committee, it's his word against hers, with senators soon deciding whose word carries more weight. And tonight, Kavanaugh is still testifying in front of senators. Live for UMTV, I'm Brianna Ross. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Brianna. And here on University of Miami's campus, social media has also brought allegations of sexual assault into the public eye. An anonymous Instagram account was created last Thursday and had a few hundred followers before it was taken down the next morning. It was called You Miami Sexual Assault Prevention, and the account posted photos of men it claims were UM students who sexually assaulted other students. The account's claims have not been verified, and the university did not immediately comment on the posts. Meanwhile, President Frank has reminded the UM community of his commitment to provide a safe environment in an email sent to students, faculty, and staff on Monday. The email reads in part, all faculty members, supervisory staff, and employees in areas where there is frequent interaction with students will be required to complete online training to learn more about sexual misconduct issues there or obligation to report allegations and how they can help support members of the university community. The coalition was established in 2014 to create awareness and resources for students, faculty, and staff. Dr. Frank has encouraged all victims of sexual misconduct to contact the university's Title IX coordinator. 
Ladies, you might notice a new feature the next time you use a bathroom on the Coral Gables campus. This week, I learned how student government is helping the UM student body one restroom at a time. Tampons and pads are now free in 22 women's and gender-inclusive bathrooms on campus. Last April, the Student Government Senate conducted a trial by putting free hygiene products in select bathrooms accompanied by paper surveys. Speaker of the Senate, Milind Karana, says the response to the surveys was overwhelming. People were literally just writing, we love this on all the comments, we want this, this should be a thing, this should be a thing. And so pretty soon it, it got really tough to getting, just like trying to get them out of the actual boxes because there were so many in there. The trial garnered enough support from students that the Senate skipped the voting process and brought the bill straight to the administration. Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Patricia Whiteley, says she was happy to give the bill the green light. I think students are super appreciative because previously you could only really go to the convenience store Sometimes they were out, and then students were in the position of having to run across to CBS uh, and, you know, make a class, those, some of those kinds of things. We're here in the Learning Center women's bathroom, which has one of these dispensers. Now, both of these are indicating that they're empty, but Senate tells me that they should be refilled daily by facilities at 8 a.m. They should be readily accessible on campus, I feel like, and it's a really good initiative to have on campus. We're really trying to do everything we can to meet the students where they are and to be sensitive to the various issues that they're bringing up. So, ladies, there's one less thing you have to worry about this year. And senators told me it is now up to facilities whether or not more bathrooms will be stocked with the free feminine products. Moving from campus to Hard Rock Stadium, where tonight the Hurricanes are set to take on the UNC Tar Heels. It's the first Canes home game on a Thursday night in eight years. So what can we expect during the game? Our reporters Isaiah Kim Martinez and Brianna Nesperal are standing by on the sidelines at Hard Rock Stadium with more. Hey guys, how's the mood over there? Thanks guys, we're live here at Hard Rock Stadium where the Canes are about to take on the North Carolina Tar Heels in the first ACC matchup of the season. It's a big game for the Canes as they build momentum to prepare against, to play against FSU next Saturday. And tonight's game is a blackout game. Fans are all wearing black, the team, they'll be wearing their black uniforms. We're both wearing black. But there's one question on every single fan's mind as we head into tonight's game. Isaiah, what is it? And Brianna, that question is which player will be wearing black under center to start this ball game against North Carolina? Will it be five? Will it be 12? Nikosi Perry or Malik Rozier? That's the thing. Head coach Mark Richt earlier this week in a presser said that he knows the answer, the team knows the answer, but he doesn't want anybody else to know that answer. So we'll have to wait until kickoff to see who will be under center. Perry played, Perry played really well last week, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. And we'll be back a little later to give you some more details on both quarterbacks as we lead into tonight's game. But for now, we're live here at Hard Rock Stadium. Back to you guys. Well, it looks like it's going to be quite the matchup, but how will the weather hold up? UMTV meteorologist Sean McAday joins us now with a first look at the forecast. Thanks, guys. Now, it's going to be a great day for some football. Uh, it'll be mostly clear around kickoff. Uh, temperatures in the upper 80s. There'll be a slight breeze, but really nice conditions. That'll stick around for halftime. Uh, but by the end of the game, the temperatures will drop just into the lower 80s. It'll become rather humid. You might notice if you look at your phone, some water condensing on your phone screen. Around the past few hours around Hard Rock, here's Hard Rock just north of Miami. You can see, this is our radar, almost nothing in the sky, absolutely nothing. We take it back to the rest of South Florida, nothing on the East Coast, some pop-up thunderstorms on the West Coast, but still not too bad. Now, taking a look for the rest of the weather coming up in the show, it's still hurricane season, so we still have to work about the tropics. And then we'll talk about your week ahead. That's it for weather. Back to the desk. Thank you, Sean. The countdown to midterm elections in South Florida continues. Election day is just a few weeks away, and the pressure to mobilize voters has sparked a wave of rallies on the University of Miami campus. Student activists gathered on the Lakeside Patio stage this week to register voters. The event is part of the university's Get Out the Vote initiative. Participants received information about Election Day registration and a breakdown of Florida's ballot issues. The last day to register to vote is October 9th. You can find the Get Out the Vote organization's next registration event and other voter information on the Get Out the Vote website under University of Miami Student Affairs initiatives. 
And former First Lady Michelle Obama will make a stop at the University of Miami Watsco Center tomorrow as part of the When We All Vote voter mobilization rally rallies. The event features guest speakers such as singer Kelly Rowland and Faith Hill and actor Keegan-Michael Key. This is Michelle Obama's final rally for the When We All Vote Week of Action. And for in-depth coverage on local and national politics, tune in to our midterm election special. We will cover issues in immigration, gun violence, and the environment. You can watch it live November 6th right here on UMTV. I'm so excited for the Michelle Obama event. I love her. I love Keegan-Michael Key. I can't wait. I love Faith Hill. Well, I, my mom loves Faith Hill more than me, but I'm definitely excited to be there with her. And still ahead on News Vision, we're following more breaking news. A tragic development in the case of the University of Miami student who was hit by a car earlier this semester. We'll tell you what happened when we come back. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, Heartbreaking news tonight. Sophomore Bailey Grogan passed away this morning. She was my sorority sister in Zeta Tau Alpha. Bailey was hit by a car at the intersection of US-1 and Red Road early morning on August 19th. UMTV reporter Evan Aldo is live outside the Zeta Suite at the UM Panhellenic Building. Thank you guys. That's right. Bailey Grogan passed away this morning. She was hit by a car just a few days before the school year started. She was seriously injured and placed in a medically induced coma. Bailey was a sophomore from Canada studying immunology and microbiology. She had hoped to become a doctor. She was also an active member of the Zeta Tau Alpha sorority. Bailey's friends and sorority sisters described her as very kind and very compassionate. She was very studious and loved the outdoors, animals, and horseback riding. Bailey's family and friends are asking us to keep her in our thoughts and prayers. More information about a memorial will come out soon. Meanwhile, another lost life was celebrated this past weekend. I drove up north to the town of Sunrise, Florida to cover a 5K race with a purpose. Zero, go! Hundreds of people participated recently in the annual Zero Prostate Cancer 5K race in Sunrise, Florida. Their goal, to raise money and spread awareness for the disease. Former Coral Gables High School cross-country coach Rick Stern usually runs in the race, but this year he's sitting out because he is recovering from the surgery he had just two weeks ago. So uh, about 15 days ago, I had my uh, prostate removed, and uh, I still have uh, traces of cancer around the margins, and they also found it in muscle uh, right uh, below my bladder. So I have to have radiation for that. So. One of the event's biggest supporters, Terry Little, passed away very recently on September 14th after a 10-year battle with prostate cancer. But his sister, Susie Snurlitzer, is not giving up the fight against the disease. I'm proud to say that this morning we have 81 people on Team Terry and we've raised in excess of $17,000 as a team. Susie is using the funding of the race to help prostate cancer research nationwide. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to go to Washington, D.C. once a year for the That's Prostate Cancer Summit to meet with our politicians in support of prostate cancer research funding through the Department of Defense. According to the American Cancer Society, prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in American men after lung cancer. One in nine men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime and about 30,000 die of it each year. To Rick, the most important thing is staying positive. I know I'm gonna get better, 
Uh, I know the radiation is going to, you know, make me more tired. I know it's going to keep my activities down to a minimum, but that's fine. You know, uh, I know uh, I'm going to beat it and I'm going to get back to normal. This year, over 300 people competed in the race, and together they raised over $80,000 just this year to help fight prostate cancer. Next year, they're expecting even more people to compete and more money to be raised. From Sunrise, Florida, for UMTV, I'm Evan Aldo. Thank you, Evan, and there will be a vigil held by the Zeta Tau Alpha sorority soon. UM students were urged to help save lives and become organ donors during an event called Celebration of the Gift of Life that was held at the Shalala Student Center last night. The event was hosted by the Life Alliance Organ Recovery Agency. The speakers discussed common misconceptions and raised awareness about organ donation. Represent, re representatives say the donation could do more than just save lives. They will be saving lives. There are people who it impacts their lives forever and they are, you know, they'll be forever in debt and grateful to the donor families, the donor themselves. And it's something that it's like the gift that keeps on giving. The organization plans to do more outreach, re outreach events in the future. People can sign up to become a donor at www.donatelife.florida.org. All right, well, hopefully our weather can have some better news for us. Sean, what can you tell us? All right, just outside the studio, it's actually pretty nice. 85 degrees, but it feels like 93. That's that huge dew point at 75%. It's quite humid outside. There's a breeze, nice breeze at east, southeast, 11 miles per hour. Now, if we take a fall back into the rest of the country, national temperatures, you can see that it looks pretty like autumn. Uh, Mid-60 temperatures within the northeast. Mid-70s in the plains. 42 in Billings. Yikes. I'm glad I'm here in Miami. Now let's take a peek at what the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean is up to currently. It's still hurricane season. Down here in the Lesser Antilles, we have Tropical Storm Kirk kicking at 50 miles per hour over the next few days as it makes its way into the Caribbean Sea. It's going to encounter a lot of wind shear. It will literally tear it apart. Uh, Kirk will live its last day sometime Saturday or Sunday, and we won't have to worry about it. But we, what we might have to worry about is some possible development down here in the South Caribbean going into the month of October. This is typically where we see some development this time of year. Models are starting to sniff out something in about 10 days time. Too early to tell, but it's worth a mention. Looking into tomorrow's temperatures, 82 degrees tomorrow morning as you make your commute. Sunny and humid, it'll still be humid from the night before. I talked about that a little earlier. By tomorrow afternoon, it'll be a nice 90 degrees, breezy with a few clouds, but no rain. Normally this time of year, it's raining pretty hard, but uh, it'll be a nice day. Uh, a little bit off from what we're used to. And then that takes us to our seven day forecast. Tomorrow will be a clear day. The rest of the week, not too much, pretty stormy. Definitely some Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, a little bit of breezy, and then we'll wrap up Thursday definitely with a storm. That's it for weather, back to the desk. Thank you, Sean. Miami's Wynwood District is best known for its vibrant culture and artwork. One location called the Wynwood Building is owned by the University of Miami and gives graduate students a chance to display their works in a real art studio. For a lot of the students, it's their first chance to have their art prominently displayed in a real gallery. Students who are pursuing their masters in studio art can feature their best art pieces at the exhibit. It was kind of a big deal to me because I was like, this is the first time I'm, I'm on a wall with somebody else. The master's program is very competitive, with only four students being accepted this year. Those four now have a large professional space to showcase their art. The exhibit is free to the public. That art looks so cool. I want to go see it. I'm definitely going to check it out this weekend. And coming up next on News Vision. We're live. We're going to be live at Hard Rock Stadium with more on the matchup between UNC and Miami. Don't go away. This bag unattended in the dining hall and set up hidden cameras to see what would happen. It only took 14 seconds. If only it were this easy to spot a thief. Remember, keep it with you, keep it safe. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you.
Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome into sports, everybody. It is hot right now here at Hard Rock Stadium. She needs it. We're just minutes away from the Hurricanes ACC opener against North Carolina. And Brianna, we were talking about it before. Nikosi Perry, Malik Rozier, they were behind us just a few seconds ago. Quarterback battle, who's gonna be the starter? That's the question on everyone's mind. They played FA FIU last week. Both players played. What did you see from them? Well, you know, last game, Rozier did start. He only played two drives though. And to be honest, it wasn't his best performance. I mean, granted, he only played those two drives before Coach Mark Rick took him out and put Nikosi Perry in. But once Perry got in, it was a whole different ball game. I mean, the offense woke up. It was like a team I've never seen before. And he even scored three touchdowns with them. I mean, Isaiah, what did you see with the team? Honestly, Brianna, three touchdowns speaks for themselves. Honestly, Nikosi Perry was throwing footballs that you have not seen Malik throw all year. He was hitting guys in stride. It's going to make the decision really hard. Only Mark Rick knows. So I guess we'll have to wait a little bit to find out that answer, who will be under center uh, just minutes away. Uh, but Mark Rick has that answer, like we said. And Bree, I know we talk about the turnover chain 2.0. I know we got a story on the new version. I mean, we all know about the new turnover chain. Last year was the U. This time, it's Sebastian Diabas. And it's bigger and it's better. And our very own UMTV reporter, Madison Brown, has a story. The University of Miami's turnover chain changed the game for the Canes football team last year. Literally. The team won its first 10 games last season, making it the best season for the Hurricanes since 2003. The defensive one. coaching staff worked with Miami jeweler A.J. Machado to make the custom chain in the shape of Miami's U logo. Heading into this year's season, the team and A.J. decided the chain needed an upgrade. They loved it last year, but we thought, how can we top it off, you know? We had such a magical season. The new chain made its debut at the Hurricanes home opener against the Savannah State Tigers. Miami defensive back Trajan Bandy recovered the ball after a Tigers fumble in the second quarter. Bandy stood up to show off his bling, revealing the new chain with a custom Sebastian the Ibis charm. This year, you know, I mean, it's just... It's something that they give you when you get a turnover. It's just an unbelievable feeling. It gets the energy going for the, for the defense and the offense and just give us momentum. Both chains are a lot heavier than they look, but the new chain takes it one step further. This is the size of last year's two kilo turnover chain, but this year's is three kilos. So add this and that's how big the new chain is. The U-charm is complete with 900 stones, while the Ibis glitters with more than 4,000. Defensive coordinator Manny Diaz is credited as one of the masterminds behind the chain's creation. The way the Ibis shines and pops is, is really remarkable. So when our players saw it, they were, you know, it's hard to outdo, you know, 1.0, but I think 2.0 did it. It all comes down to the U's reputation, and the chain was made to encompass that. We did it with like such a bang, you know, the swag we have. Us from Miami, our swag is different than, you know, than the most of the, the whole nation, let's say, you know, so I thought, you know, I just it just took it to another level. Reporting for UMTV, I'm Madison Brown. You know, Isaiah, I like the new turnover chain. It's bigger, it's gaudier. I mean, what's there not to like? And I hope these boys can bring it out tonight. I like the bird, I'll be honest. But we're actually going to throw it over to our sports anchor, Grace Smith, who has some stories on volleyball and tennis. Grace, take it over. Thank you guys. For the fourth time, a University of Miami player has won the Elite Oracle ITA Masters Tournament Trophy. The tournament is one of the most prestigious titles in collegiate competition. 
Junior Estela Perez Somariba dominated the tournament in Malibu, California this past weekend. Perez Somariba took six of her eight matches after losing the first two games. This victory earned her an automatic berth in the Oracle ITA National Fall Championships in November. Meanwhile, the Canes volleyball team defeated Duke University this past Sunday in front of almost 1,000 fans at the Knights Sports Complex. This is the Canes' fourth straight win this season and at home. Colby Bird has a season-high 17 kills, and Bridget Wallenberger tallied eight blocks during the third set alone. The team is undefeated against ACC opponents, and they travel to Pitt tomorrow to face the current conference champions. On Sunday, they will go to Virginia to conclude their first conference road trip. Well, I'll say it once, and I've said it once, and I'll say it again. I know nothing about tennis, so I'm definitely going to have to go and check that out. It's still to come on News Vision. This is not your average beer. We will introduce you to a festival of flavored brews that is sure to get you game day ready right after a short break. 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her. Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Now, after a long day of work, I know all you want to do is unwind and get a beer, but one brewery, brewery leaves its customers far from zen with an explosion of flavors. Um, UMTV reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez tells us more. You know, we're known for having this culinary style, culinary approach to brewing, making all of these crazy flavors. People wanted something better than your average American beer. There's nothing average about this place. You won't find Bud Light or Heineken here. Welcome to the Funky Buddha Brewery in Oakland Park, Florida, where the beers are as crazy as the name. When we make a beer, we're very precise. You know, if we say we're gonna make a beer that tastes like a note, like a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like our no crust. Like you, one sip and it's like nostalgia. We're talking natural ingredients like coconut and peanut butter infused into your favorite brew for a flavor explosion. Everything is spoken with their face when they first try it. It's like they take one sip and they're just blown away. No words needed. Oh, and don't forget about the maple bacon coffee porter. Yes, hold on to your seats, I said bacon. That is really what got a lot of people attracted to us. It's uh, definitely what some people would call dessert beer. It's uh, very culinary driven. The Funky Buddha ferments beer on a 30 barrel system, meaning they make around 9 million pints a year. So here at the Funky Buddha, they have tons of crazy flavors that you would never even think of. But one beer that caught the attention of many people in Miami was a flavor called Landry's Tears. The purpose of the ale was to poke fun at football player and former Miami Dolphin Jarvis Landry, who criticized the organization when he was traded. The drink includes sour grapes, bitter pink grapefruit, and sea salt to describe Landry. That one blew up more than we could have ever imagined. It was, you know, sour, salty, and bitter, exactly like Landry. No shortage of creativity here, and they're just getting started. Reporting in Oakland Park, I'm Isaiah Kim Martinez, UMTV. Okay, so right after tonight, I'm definitely gonna go and get a big beer pitcher, and I'm gonna <laughs> head out to the game. It's it's done, it's a plan. It's a plan, I like it. Are, Are you going to the game? Oh yeah, for sure, right after this. Are Amazing. You me? All right, well that's all we have for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. We hope to see you next week on News Vision. Have a good night.